Greetings my brothers and sisters, this is Christopher. In this video I wanted to talk to you about something important, an important issue that I believe people need to be aware of. And I know many brothers and sisters have had dreams and visions about this, but I just want to talk about this now. This is not new from what I have discussed in my previous videos, but something I believe is important to raise now, and that is that I believe that in the coming days, as we enter into the Great Tribulation, that I believe demons will be coming upon the earth. Real demons and devils from the pits of hell that will be coming upon the earth. I've dreamed of these beings so many times, just dream after dream, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about them, a little bit about what I believe is coming upon the earth, what I believe the Lord has shown me, through my dreams, my experiences. So just, just to start off, you might be wondering, where does it say in the Bible that demons are going to be coming upon the earth? If you look at the fourth seal of the Lord's judgment in the Revelation, it speaks of Hades, or hell, coming upon the earth. If you look at the angels bound at the river Euphrates, they're released with an army of 200 million strong. And this army uh, is riding atop of creatures. They're armored. And the creatures breathe fire and brimstone and have serpent tails with which they do harm. So that's, uh, that's two examples. And then you have the scripture of the bottomless pit being opened, which is hell. You have the scripture of the demonic locusts coming out of the pit to torment man for five months. So these are some of the examples in the scripture that show this. We are told in the word of our spiritual enemy, who is the devil and his fallen angels. The angels who came down from heaven, who were rebellious against God, and who created giants in the days of old with their offspring with mankind. So, these angels are spoken of as those who have sinned and have been reserved for judgment in chains, in darkness. And this is spoken of in the Bible. And this is further explained in the book of Enoch, which is referenced in the Bible and is actually quoted. So, in the book of Enoch, it talks about the angels coming down from heaven and creating giants in the days of old up to a hundred a hundred meter tall giants I think it was 300 cubits so massive massive giants from the mixture of uh, angel blood and man and they caused great sins and abominations on the earth that resulted in the flood and the Lord wiping life out upon the earth except for Noah and his family so we are told by Jesus that in the days in which he returns, it will be like the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, the Lord said that men only thought evil continuously from their hearts. So we are coming into just very, very difficult times and the lawlessness will increase. The love in people's hearts will wax cold and you can see how this will happen. We, I believe, are on the verge of world war. We're on the verge of economic collapse worldwide. And perhaps there will be a number of events leading up to this. I'm hopeful that the Lord will be merciful in his judgments to bring people to repentance before the greater wrath of his falls. And the first four seals in the Revelation are actually world war and economic collapse. And that isn't even the wrath of God. So, to me that is where the tribulation truly begins and the events that occur before then. The earthquakes and famines in, in diverse places, earthquakes in diverse places, the pestilences, plagues, Wars and rumors of wars, nations rising against nations, 
where Jesus warns us about the signs to precede his return in Matthew 24. But these things are called the beginning of sorrows. And I believe we are entering into those times. We're not there yet, for the world is still in peace and safety. And I do believe that the scripture will be fulfilled, every single word. And when it says peace and safety, then shall come sudden destruction, as travaileth upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And we are told in the scripture that men's hearts will fail them for fear of what they see coming upon the earth. Now, I never used to, I didn't consider that verse very well in the past. But to have your heart fail in fear means you died. Your heart gave up and you died out of sheer terror of what you saw upon the earth. Now, these are some of the scriptures that talks about the times that we're coming into. Jesus says that it will be the greatest tribulation the world has ever seen. And if the days were not shortened for the sake of the elect, no flesh would survive. So I want to just impress upon you the seriousness of what the word warns is coming. We are told that in the beginning of sorrows, there will be famine and war. And then in the first four seals, the beginning of the tribulation, we have death upon one-fourth of the earth to be killed by sword, by death, by famine and the beasts of the earth. So we are warned several times of famines. Now I want to get into that later, but I strongly recommend that you prepare physically as well as mentally and most importantly spiritually for I do believe we will be coming into times of economic collapse and whatever your rapture position is, I believe that we should all hold fast until our Lord returns and hold fast unto our deaths, if it be so. And I do believe that we should prepare for what is coming and that involves physical preparation because we are warned of famines in the word. We are told in Proverbs that the prudent foresee evil and hide themselves and to take care of our family so I want to just discuss a few things about that um, just to turn your mind to those things because everything that we see in this world is just getting worse we're getting more and more evil and perversity everywhere it seems it's not even a week goes by before some new big issue happens flooded all over the news and I believe these serve as distractions to keep us away from our true focus our focus on Jesus our Lord God who is one with his Father and the Holy Spirit because it is so important that we cling to him in these times because that is the only way we will be able to stand in really the horror of what is coming and I'm not saying this to instill fear in you you should not fear and neither should I fear we should not fear any but the Lord our God and fear him only we should not fear flesh we should not fear our deaths so I'm not saying any of these things to cause you to fear or cause you to worry only that I'm saying these things to cause you to cling to our Lord Jesus because he is the only one without him we are nothing but with him we can do all things through him who strengthens us so I do believe that the fallen angels of old from the book of Enoch and in the Bible that are described these beings have been bound for a time and reserved until the end of the age for judgment which we are living in but as part of the Lord's judgment upon mankind I believe these beings and the demons of hell will be released upon the earth because mankind has worshipped after demons and fallen angels instead of God and they have rejected his holy word and rejected his only begotten son Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and King and mankind will be given those that they served which will be the demons and devils and I do believe that they will be coming upon the earth uh, so the scripture I referenced before 
is some of the scriptures speaking about that in the Bible. But I've had so many dreams about demons and devils, and this has really increased since I came to the truth of the Word and confessed my faith in, in the Lord Jesus in 2016. So, I've dreamed of dinosaurs, many dreams, dinosaurs, T-Rex, Velociraptor, large dinosaurs, strange animals that I'd never seen before coming upon the earth, and they seem to be very, uh, very vicious, very, uh, very powerful. Um, they seem to be, have a maliciousness to them, that they were going after people. And in those dreams, where I saw these new animals, they avoided me, and they didn't come for me, but it felt like they were going after others. And I know that we are told in the Word that the locusts, the demonic locusts, will not attack those who have received the seal of God upon their foreheads. So, to be sealed by the Lord is to trust in Him and to draw near to Him and to follow His commands, His teachings, so that we are not found in the sinful and worldly ways. So I just encourage you to draw near to the Lord always, and I'll be reiterating that throughout all that I speak to you. Um, but I've seen lots of different demonic creatures in my dreams. And as I said in a previous video, uh, when I was between like 15 to 18, um, I got into, I was researching the topic of aliens a lot, and it led to me putting myself into a quite a state of fear and after a certain movie I watched as well and then one night I had three beings come into my room and I believe that they were fallen angels and they were in bodies and they looked like aliens and it was the most terrifying fear that I'd ever felt in my life and it is a fear that I have still not fully overcome um, the Lord has given me many dreams where I have encountered these beings again. And in many cases, I've cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just wanted to let you know that these beings are real. Satan is real. He was a fallen angel. And he is the king of the demons. And he is our spiritual enemy and his lieutenants and his servants are the fallen angels from heaven and they hate us they hate us because we are made in the image of God and they seek to destroy us and destroy mankind and those who will receive the mark of the beast will be destroyed and go to the lake of fire forever so one it's very important that you refuse that at all costs even if they kill you or those around you. We're told in the word that there is no way back from that. Do not accept it, and I believe it is the RFID microchip, because I believe that potentially it may alter your DNA or do something else to you. I believe that humans have been receiving technology from these fallen angels, demons. There is no such thing as aliens. They are demons and devils, and they are real, and I believe they're coming upon the earth. So, I've had dreams of dinosaurs, um, they're intelligent to an extent. Uh, I've dreamt of giants, only a few times, but a huge amount of giants were coming upon the land, and they were going after people to kill them. I've dreamt of huge demons walking the countryside, massive, like 50 meter tall demons, like fiery, fiery demons, and they all met up, and I was like staying in a bus, like 100 meters up in a tree, I don't know why the tree was so large, maybe it was 50 meters, and they saw me across from a distance, and they came up the tree and they turned into like human forms so they were able to 
turn into human forms. So that's another thing that I do believe that there are demons that can transform into human forms. I've seen them in my dreams. I've seen demons animate like household objects. I've seen demon gnomes. I've seen setting traps for people. I've seen just demon robots. Um, I had one recently where they trapped people inside a movie theater and were killing people one at a time. This robot that was shooting, shooting metal balls at people. Anyway, it was, I've just seen a vast amount of demons and I don't ask to receive demon dreams and they occur and in the past I was overcome by these things because they were terrifying to me. Um, but ever since the first time I cast out a demon in the name of Jesus Christ, that has given me such a comfort and it lets me know that I'm not alone and that I can understand that these beings, they truly are. It is biblical. And when you cast out a demon in the name of Jesus Christ, it's just the most real type of evidence for you, even if it is in a dream. And I believe that is in the spirit, so I do believe it's real. And these beings flee from you when you use the authority of the name of Jesus Christ as a child of God. And we know that in the scriptures that the Lord instructed his disciples and they cast out demons in his name. And we are told that we who follow him can do the same. And we are told that the Lord has given us all power to overcome the enemy and trample upon scorpions and serpents. So I know we can do this, but I also know that we must be walking the walk and we must be close to the Lord. And we cannot be abiding in sin. So that is something as well. Uh, our power and our authority in Christ Jesus cannot be exercised if we are walking in worldly ways and if we are not seeking our Lord. Um, it's just something to pay attention to. If you ever receive dreams like these, attacks, or and I do believe they're coming, if you ever confront a demon or a devil, a UFO, an alien, they're all demons. Any spirits, dark spirits, they're all demons. Demons can take many different forms. And we are, there's good and evil. That's it. So, anything that's not good, it's on the evil side. So, beware. And the side that is good is our Lord Jesus, His holy angels, God. There is going to be no... Angels of God that appear like ain't that appear like aliens coming down to the earth, uh, coming to bring peace to mankind. No, Jesus Christ is bringing peace to mankind. That's all. So, if you ever see these beings, cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ, and do not fear and do not doubt, and keep casting them out. And once you have said that enough, three to five times is usually how much I say it. If that does not work, then I pray to the Lord. And I pray to Lord Jesus. And every single time in my dreams, the demon has been cast out. So just to give you an idea, I've dreamt of skeleton demons, like a dragon. I've dreamt of, it was huge, it was like 50 meters tall. And I was in a cave, and it was trying to get me, get us, and I've dreamt of football field-sized demons. It was a demonic lady laying down, and she was humongous. It was, she was enormous, and the Lord opened a door, and I heard his voice saying, Oh, I'm glad you were able to overcome the previous demon, because I need to get you to defeat this one. And, um... I only overcame the previous demon because I stopped running in fear and I just said it doesn't matter if I die, I'm going to trust in Jesus. And I was with my close friend and we turned around and just faced the demon in Jesus' name. So 
to face these beings, you really need courage. And the fear that these beings emit is something else. If you've never experienced it before, it's like this aura of pure fear. Um, and it's certainly not of God. And it is, it is some very paralyzing type of fear. When I first experienced it, those aliens that came into my room, the fear turned on when they were in the hallway. I didn't even see them yet. It was like they just unleashed an aura of a wave of fear over me. But I know that perfect love casts out fear and that when we are in our Lord Jesus, we can overcome these beings. So I've felt fear before in opposing these beings, but the comfort that I received through our Lord Jesus is what helps me to overcome and I overcome them in Jesus name. So if you've never experienced anything like this, evil energy, these types of things, just don't fear. And just call on Jesus, call upon the name of the Lord, pray to him, cast out the energy, the demons, the spirits, the aliens, the whatever, in Jesus name. Just know that our greatest and most powerful sword is the word of God. It is the scriptures and the word of God is also Jesus Christ. So you can call upon him, call upon the name of the Lord. You can speak the scriptures of spoke about this in my one hour video the end is upon us what you need to know i've spoken about it i recommend you strongly that you pray for the armor of god at least once a week the whole armor of god ephesians 6 10 to 18 read it consider it pray to the lord for it always and it's very important and it's very real spiritual armor it's not a joke and we're not in a fairy tale we're in a real battle against good and evil and for the life and souls of countless millions so we are not we get lulled into the world and we get lulled into the false sense of security and that things seem like they'll just keep going on forever and all seems normal all seems peaceful but remember that when there is peace that is when the sudden destruction will come and we need to be ready because i can see it i can see the time and season that we're living in i can see the many signs poured out by the lord i can see many of them of course i don't see them all but i know that we are on the verge of war economic collapse we're on the verge of the new world satanic order the rise of the antichrist beast who I believe is Barack Obama, who will return to power as a world ruler. We are very close to the worldwide imposition of the Mark of the Beast RFID chip or electronic tattoo. We are very close to the rise of the false prophet and all of these things. I believe that after the September 23rd and the eclipse of August 21st, we have had an increase in demonic activity upon the earth. Why? Because this is the beginning of the Lord's judgments and he has unloosed this hand of Satan we are told in Revelation 12 that Satan will be cast down to the earth and his wrath will be great but his wrath is short we know that because he only rules for three and a half years whenever the beast Antichrist rises three and a half years to the end of the tribulation but preceding that, we may have war, we may have economic collapse, we may have a lot of things before that. And I do believe that these demons will be coming. And I believe they may be coming in the guise of aliens. Why? Because I've seen them as aliens. This wasn't a mistake that I received this experience. And I thank the Lord for all of my experiences, even the fearful ones and if even the ones that were difficult for I know that they are used for the good and these beings are very real they are spiritual beings but they can also exist in the physical how do I know that because the fallen angels mated with women to produce giants and I know that this is true you might not believe that but that's what the Word of God says and that's what the book of Enoch says and I believe that it is true and those things are not parables. That is some literal fact as to what happened that led to the earth being wiped out before. 
and I believe we're going to be encountering these types of things upon the earth during the tribulation. I believe it's going to be very, very bad, far beyond our expectations, far beyond my imagination to even from what I've seen. And I've seen massive, I've seen huge demon dogs. I've seen a massive, like, uh, I saw a giant fox underground about the size of a mountain I was observing from above, surrounded by a, a demonic army, and the the fox was Satan, and I looked away from him, and he laughed because I, I showed fear. I was I cowered when I saw him um, because I wasn't ready, and... I need to grow stronger in that, in trusting my Lord always, no matter what I see. And I just want to relay this to you. I've seen demonic possessed people, spirits coming into people um, that they cannot be killed. I chopped their heads off and it did nothing in my dream. I cast them out in the name of Jesus and that is how I defeated them. Know that these beings that we're opposing there's no gun or bullet or knife or blade that's going to do anything to them. I've seen dinosaurs in my dreams. One of the dreams was I was outside and I had a rifle. And I felt, because in the days before that, I was thinking about, oh, I would prepare this way and I'd prepare that way. And then in the dream I had a rifle and, you know, my a knife on and, and such things like that. You know, physical means of preparation. And then... What did I see? A dinosaur outside, and it charged at me, and I shot it five times. It did absolutely nothing. And from some of what I believe is coming, no earthly weapons can do anything to these things. Um, it is only our spiritual weapons, which is the scripture, which is the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. It is only by using his name and the authority that he has given us as his children that we can overcome the enemy. We are told in Revelation 12:11 that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the testimony of Jesus Christ, and that we do not love our lives unto death. So we need to be ready and prepared to give our lives for the Lord if necessary. And I know that we can say these things, and in the moment, it will really be the test. And I'm not saying what I will do or how it's exactly going to unfold or anything, but I'm at least trying to prepare myself mentally for what is coming and spiritually, most importantly, with the word of the God, uh, with the word of God and the truth of the word, which is very difficult times approaching. <clears throat> now, you may not believe that we are close to these events happening, but these events, I believe, are very close, and. I believe that our society is very fragile. We live in a world where if just the power went out, untold amounts of people would die. We are told uh, they, release, they release some analysis in the United States that if their grid was knocked out by an EMP, that 90% of the people would die within a year or something like that. So. Just think about how everything is reliant upon electricity. Food distribution, gas pumps, the credit system, traffic lights, grocery stores, refrigerators. Everything is reliant upon that. So your food in your fridge is going to run out. It's not going to be refrigerated. The freezed food is going to run out. It's going to go off. What do you have in your pantry right now? How many weeks of food do you have in your home right now? If something happened, even if it's not the tribulation beginning, even if it's not the famines and the wars, even if it's just an emergency or a bushfire or power went out for some other type of emergency, what do you have to prepare yourself for that? What do you have for physical preparations? I believe that it is wise to prepare in those ways because the Lord has warned us of what's to happen before his return. So I am impressing it upon you that consider it to prepare physically 
and I've written a survival book which has important survival discussion, survival techniques, how you can uh, look for food, how to skin animals, how to preserve meat, all those types of things, how to trap animals. That is a free survival book that I've written. The link will be in the description. It's a PDF document. You can download it and print it out double-sided and then put it in a plastic pocket and then put that into your backpack. Put that into somewhere and that it's not perfect but it's going to allow you to uh, when you're in a stressful environment when the pressures are around you when you're hungry and thirsty and you don't know what to do and it's so stressful you might be able to read that and get some ideas and brainstorm and think about some things that you might be able to do and obviously pray to the Lord always to seek his guidance on what to do especially in the times that are coming and in addition to that, I've written a PDF document called a Leave on Foot Survival Backpack. And this is kind of like a bug out bag or something like that. But I wrote this document for a Leave on Foot Survival Backpack, which is a backpack that you have in case you had to leave on foot. In case there's a bushfire and you had no time or your, block, your access to leave with your vehicle is blocked and you have to leave on foot. Or if war comes to your land and you can't drive on the highways because there's roadblocks, you need to leave on foot and go into the wilderness, as I've had many dreams about. And that backpack is designed to have survival essentials and tools and equipment so that it can enhance your ability to survive in the long term in the wilderness and that's just it. And you combine that with your own skills, knowledge, improvisation, and seeking the Lord. And this PDF is coupled with a Leave on Foot Survival Backpack full tutorial video that I've made. And I'll link that below as well. I want you to check out these links, please. And consider it. And... In this video, I show you an example, leave on foot backpack, 60 liter backpack with different survival essentials. This is my example to you to show you what kinds of things can go into a pack like this. And obviously you can change any of the items you want. You can make it lighter, you can choose whatever, but I believe it is important to prepare now and to prepare an emergency backpack like this in case you had to leave for whatever reason I believe the judgments of the Lord are going to be increasing until the time that we do really enter the tribulation and we have world war upon us I believe my country Australia is going to be invaded I've received many dreams about this I believe that the United States will be invaded by Russia and China I don't believe you're going to be able to be uh, staying in the cities and the suburban areas. I've had dreams of needing to flee on foot into the wilderness with nothing or one where I was able to flee with my backpack because I heeded the warnings and I left on time. You can see my video of seven dreams I've had of World War Three, and also my 30 dreams on demons and natural disasters. I've seen all different types of demons. I've seen these skeletons like raised up and they with swords and you couldn't kill them. Uh, a suit of armor with like a decrepit skeleton in it chasing after with a long with a big axe. Just stuff that is from video games and movies and things like that. But there's a reason why they show us all of these things. Because I believe that they are actually going to be coming upon the earth. And why I told you about preparation, physical preparation, is so that if the time comes, you are ready to leave if necessary. And follow the guidance of the Lord at all times. Pray to him and seek him, and if he tells you to flee, if you get a dream 
if you wake up in the middle of the night and the Lord tells you to leave and he tells you to take this and take that and don't take this, you follow his every single command and you follow his guidance because I do believe that the destruction will be sudden. In all of the dreams I've received, it was as if things were normal and then all of a sudden war was upon us. All of a sudden we were fleeing for our lives and people were being killed around me. So, I just want to discuss these things because I just want to impress upon you the seriousness of what is coming. And this is not to make you fear, not to make you worry or panic. If you have nothing, so be it. Just trust in the Lord and follow His guide. And prepare yourself, no matter your rapture position, that you will refuse the mark of the beast, that you will choose death, and you will choose our Lord Jesus instead of your life, instead of buying and selling in this world, instead of appeasing others around you or fearing for your flesh. And I say these things not that they are easy in any way, especially when it comes down to it, when they are going to kill you for refusing these things, you must refuse. And I pray and I hope that our brothers and sisters in Christ will be strengthened by the Lord in these moments to refuse and hold fast and be a glorious martyr to our Lord God. And we are told in Revelation 4, uh, 24 of those who are beheaded for not receiving the mark of the beast. They are resurrected in the first resurrection and reign with the Lord our God. So they are glorified and it is a high honor. And just be ready. Just be ready for whatever is coming. Whatever the Lord has warned us in His Word, just try to ready yourself for it. Do not fall into the trap of the peace of this world, the supposed way things seem. Oh, things are going to go on forever. I can do this and that. I'm not saying to put your lives on halt, but I'm saying that your greatest focus in these times should be the Lord. And I do believe it is important to come out from sin and worldly ways. I'm still doing that myself. I'm still struggling. I will always struggle while I'm in the flesh. And I know that I can only overcome through my Lord Jesus. And I know that it's important to seek Him and abide in Him and His Word. And to pray for the whole armor of God. I had a dream recently that... I was with an army and they represented the body of Christ and we were opposing an enemy and we were behind a fort and our fort represented the church and the fort was made of weak wood and it had lots of open windows and the enemy and we were unprepared. We had no armor or weapons or anything. I saw swords upon the wall and they were colored in red. We couldn't use them. We didn't meet the requirement for them. And our army was overconfident. We believed we were founded upon the rock, our Lord Jesus. But we were not. We were not founded upon the true gospel of Jesus. We were not founded upon His holy word. We thought that we were, but we were founded upon another Jesus. And this dream was given to me to show the state of the church. And the Lord gave me the words that a war is coming. My children are not ready to face the enemy. The enemy is prepared. Draw near to me in the time that you have left. It was very close to those words. So I believe absolutely what the Lord revealed to me and that this is coming. And this is a spiritual war, but this will become physical. We are told that the beast will make war against the saints and overcome them. We are told we will be hated by all nations and delivered up to death. We are told the dragon will persecute those who hold the testimony and commandments of Jesus. So, what happened after that was we were opposing an army and they shot a volley of arrows from the darkness. We couldn't see their army very well. And our soldiers were overconfident but we were dressed in rags. We didn't really have weapons or armor. And the arrows shot, went right through the open windows and went right through the fort, the thin wood. 
and almost felled our entire army. And we were overconfident. We believed that our fort was going to protect us. They didn't see the giant gaping holes in the church, in the fort that we were defending. And then we sent out part of our army, the only ones that had swords. They ran out to oppose the enemy and they had two-handed swords, but they were dressed in rags. They had no armor. And then the forces of the enemy came forward and they had full swords, they had full-size shields, they had full helmet, war helmets, and they had breastplates of iron and leg armor, and they had a huge force, and they decimated us and captured us as slaves. And they had a witch, a demon woman, who was with them, and I believe that she was leading them and their army. And then she cast an illusion upon me at the end of the dream. And it seemed like she wanted to wipe out my mind and make me forget about God and be her slave. And I resisted and I escaped her illusion by the help of the Holy Spirit and perseverance through her suffocating energy. So I just wanted to quickly share that. I had that on the 23rd of October. I made a, a post about it on a prophetic news website called Z3. I'll leave the link below and I'll leave the link to the other articles I've posted on there because I haven't always posted those same dreams on YouTube just to let you know if you want to read them. So I believe that war is coming. I believe that is important to prepare in all ways, physically, mentally and spiritually. Obviously spiritual is the most important. The fate of your soul is the most important thing. We are all going to die at one point or another. And unless we are raptured and taken by the Lord. And I personally leave that to the Lord. And I will set my focus to doing His will upon the earth to the best that I can do it. Even though I fail and make mistakes all the time. And I'm weak and I'm in the flesh. But I know that as long as I cling to my Lord, then I can overcome. And I just want to say that you should check out those links that I mentioned about the Leave on Foot Survival Backpack, my survival book, and the video that I did as an example of the survival backpack that you can make. And with this, you can leave on foot if necessary, or you can throw it in your car and leave, and you're ready. If something happens, the power goes out in your city, what are you going to do? Um, say if it's, it really is an EMP, like they're constantly talking about, um, which is supposedly going to disable vehicles, then you will be on foot. That's why my backpack is a leave-on-foot survival backpack. I went to survival forums, and everyone was like, oh, everyone has the position of, yeah, I'm going to stay and defend my home until my death. Are you serious? Because... If you know the Holy Bible and what the Word says is coming, you know that they're going to implement the mark of the beast. You know that war and economic collapse is coming. So, if every single person, except who are written in the Book of Life, receive the mark of the beast, and all nations are going to implement it under the rule of the Antichrist, then, like, sitting in your home is going to quickly lead to one of two decisions. You are going to accept the mark of the beast because you're going to be captured. Or if you're captured, you refuse to accept the mark of the beast and you give up your life for Jesus. So you either live by condemning your soul to hell. You live in the flesh, which is foolish because I believe that once you take that mark, you will not be the same person. I had a dream about my sister receiving the mark, she went to a, a doctor's and she went for a vaccine of some type and they gave her the mark of the beast and she came back and she was a different person and I felt so bad because I knew she was gone. Um, if you receive the mark, you will go to the lake of fire. You'll be tormented forever and ever, we're told in the word. And if they capture you, 
which they have a powerful military. You're not going to be able to defend against them with conventional... You can't fight against the New World Order with, like, a gun or something. They are going to capture you, and then you have the choice of Mark of the Beast or death. So, what other option is there? The other option is fleeing if you get warned by the Holy Spirit to flee. And if you can't flee because they've locked down all the roads, then you're going to be fleeing on foot. And if you're going to be fleeing on foot, maybe it's wise to cast your mind to what you would take with you. Something light, not too heavy, but just some basic tools and equipment that can help you. Um, so that may be all that you can take. So that's why I made that video. That's why I wrote those documents to give you some insight into survival topics if you don't know much about that. That's why I made it so you can print that out and put it in your book, put it in your backpack. It's free. I've bought different survival books in, part, in the past and I've tried to include as much information that I've learned about survival topics over time because I'm interested in those things. Um, so that way you can be somewhat prepared in the event that you had to flee on foot. And it may be for a bushfire, it may be for a tornado, it may be for a flood, it may be for anything. That that thing, that backpack may come in useful. And But I do believe that we are into those times. We're on the verge of the tribulation. We are in or near the beginning of sorrows. And this is only going to increase the birth pains. And I believe that the Lord's judgments are going to be poured out upon the earth. And I believe that America is Babylon and they will be judged. And I pray and I hope that the judgments at first will be merciful to bring those to repentance. And I do believe in a rapture. I actually believe in several raptures. But I believe the first one will be only for those who are worthy. And I do not say that I am worthy. I'll leave that to the Lord. And I'm ready, readying myself at least mentally and trying to, to be prepared to do the Lord's will no matter what. If I'm on the earth or taken or whatever it is, whatever it is, I know that the most important thing, because I am confident in my salvation, which I have worked out with fear and trembling, but I know that at any time, if I renounce my Lord or if I go back to sinful ways, if I, go, if I renounce Him and His Word, then I'll also go to hell. And I know that as long as I abide in my Lord, I am sure of my salvation and I am sure of his promises. But I know that salvation of others' souls is the most important. And if you're already sure of your salvation because you believe in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, then what, what is most important then? It is the salvation of those that you know the salvation of your friends and your family and those in darkness. So please share the word with them in any way that you can. Please pray for them. Pray for the unsaved. Pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering persecution and for all of our brethren in Christ that we are going to be ready and we will stand fast in our Lord Jesus and refuse the mark of the beast and that the Lord will give us of his strength and his courage and might so that we may refuse it and do his will in the coming times. I So getting back to the topic of demons that I made this video about, but I'm discussing other issues because I've already, I felt like I've discussed most of the things that I wanted to talk about already on my channel. All of the videos I've made I've already discussed most everything I wanted to talk to my brothers and sisters about. And now I'm just bringing this up as a summary, as a reminder that, yes, we will have horrible demonic creatures and monsters coming upon the earth in the tribulation. And yes, we may be there during the tribulation. For I do believe that many will be purified through the tribulation and wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, as we are told in Revelation 7 and 714 
and I believe that will be most of the church will go through the tribulation. So that's why I'm bringing this up about physical preparation. If you have the time, if you have the physical resources to buy any of that, most importantly, food, rice, beans, lentils. You can store them in plastic screw-on lid barrels. They're like $20 a barrel. You can buy bags of rice for $20 or $30 for like 20 kilos. You can fill those barrels up. You can have six months of food quite easily. The rice and lentils will last you for very many years. And once you have the food, it's basic food. Rice and lentils will give you all essential proteins. And then you can supplement that with foraging and hunting. Once you have the basic food, you're going to be in a better position to deal with famine, to deal with economic collapse, food shortage, anything like that. And then you need water. If you are at a location that's half decent, you're not stuck in the city, some water tanks would be useful. Um, you can fill those up from your roof, your guttering, or anything like that. Or store water, fill it up out of your tap store it you can put a little bit of bleach in so that it doesn't go bad a small capful or so and you can store water in buckets barrels whatever that's going to give you food and water that's the most important thing now if you have gold and silver you cannot eat that but depending upon how the situation goes we may have a time to use resources like that for acquiring goods it may be the case we may have time to if the economy goes down and gold and silver goes up, you may have time to buy certain things that you need. But I would not rely on that personally. I believe that if you do not prepare in advance, you cannot expect to have those things later. And it's not about having possessions and things like that. It's about having enough food and water to provide for your family in the immediate needs. And I don't know when the Lord's coming. We're told he's coming at a time we do not expect. So I'm awaiting his return earnestly. And I want to have my lamp burning and full of oil. I do not want to be a foolish virgin as we are told in the parable of the virgins in Matthew 25. I want to be ready and awaiting my Lord. But I know that there's going to be difficulty coming. And I want to prepare for that. Just as Joseph prepared for the years of famine in Egypt when he was warned by the Lord, just as Noah prepared by building the ark as he was warned by the Lord, just as Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah as he was warned by the angels of the Lord. So there is usually a warning and then we are encouraged to make steps to believe the warning and to prepare. And I believe that the Lord has warned us many times of what these days will involve and I think that's a good idea to prepare physically. So I've given you all of the resources that I have I've spent time working on. So the survival book, the Leave on Foot Backpack, my Leave on Foot Backpack video, that is going to give you a good baseline level of survival knowledge. It's going to give you an understanding of what it, what you could put in a backpack that will help you survive in the wilderness if necessary. We know in the Word that the Lord has said in the Old Testament that He can provide for us. He's provided for the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. The Lord can provide for us. If we have to escape when we have nothing, it doesn't matter. Just trust in the Lord and follow His will. If if we love the Lord and if we love Him truly and we truly focus on Him, we know that if we die, our fates are secure with Him. So that should give us peace always. And that is where abiding in the Lord and seeking Him and praying to Him, that is where we can be filled with His Spirit and where we can have the peace to come into these times. And just know that the full armor of God is important. It is the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It is girding your waist in the truth, and it is walking with the preparation of the gospel of peace upon your feet. And it's walking in the Lord's peace. And we can only walk in His peace if we understand His Word, if we understand His promises, and if we know that He is with us always, to the end, no matter what, through all tribulation. 
and that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, I just wanted to share these things with you, and I know that great and dramatic and difficult times are coming. I know that evil, terrible beings are coming upon the earth. Uh, they are the most evil things you could ever imagine, and they are worse than what you can imagine. I know that before I felt the fear that these beings can give off, I never could have imagined fear that bad. Um, and but, but over time, I've confronted these beings many times in my dreams before. I've cast out alien-looking beings. I've seen a horde of them underground with teeth, and abominable faces and in all types of forms they weren't hiding themselves if they appear as aliens they're hiding themselves they can look like a lot of different things and when they come upon the earth as aliens which I believe will happen uh, they're gonna appear as benevolent and saviors or, or whatever they may have some appear as bad aliens and some appear as good aliens and then some are the savior and some are the bad guys but they're all bad. They all work for Satan. And I had a dream recently where uh, I'll post it in the description because I posted it on the Z3 News. It was about uh, war breaking out, but the news articles were already written in advance. This was in Theresa May's office of the UK. They had already written the articles in advance because they knew what would start the war. The war was planned out. Um, don't... <laughs> Don't be confused. We are told in the word that the kings of the earth have committed fornication with Babylon and that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We are told that Satan is the ruler and god of this world and that he has deceived this whole world. So I really do think that he has control over most of our leaders at the very least and that his plans will come to fruition um, because they are written in the word and the word will be fulfilled. It's not to say we should not pray uh, against his plans, but we should pray for our brothers and sisters and the unsaved. And in that dream, they had written about war in advance. And then I saw the war. I saw tanks and bombs and stuff destroying towns and small suburbs and all these places. And then after that, I saw flying saucers come in and shooting lasers and blowing up everything after that. So the alien invasion happened after the war that was coming. Now I don't know if this is going to exactly happen like this. I'm just saying what I've been shown in my dreams. I also had another dream recently, being at my parents, um, being at my my place, and there was I saw flying saucers all across the sky, and one came near to me into the backyard and I cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ and it disappeared and it went away and then I went inside and I saw that there were demons walking around the street yep demons from hell straight up demons and they were gonna kill you and feast on you and tear you apart and that's where you need to pray to the Lord I just want to reassure you that terrible times are coming, but the Lord is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we will trust. Now, I just want to encourage you with some scriptures to read Psalm 91, of course. Read Psalm 23. Read Psalm 144. They're good scriptures. Psalm 18. Psalm 33. Psalm 62. Psalm 56. These are a lot of different psalms, but they are helpful because it shows the Lord has shown us and told us many times in His Word that He is a fortress to those who trust in Him and to those who abide in Him. And He is our strength, He is our refuge, and He is also our sword. Remember that. Um, the Scriptures are our sword, so speak the Word of God and cast out and oppose evil in the name of Jesus. Yeah, because physical and earthly means will not work. Will not work. Follow the guidance of the Lord and His Holy Spirit at all times. Flee if necessary. If you get the guidance from the Lord, follow His command. If He tells you not to look back, do not look back. If He tells you to flee in 10 minutes, flee in 10 minutes. 
if he tells you not to take something, don't take something. Follow his every command, because every single thing he tells you is for a reason. And we don't understand what the reasons are, but there is a good reason, and you'll figure it out later. Um, so, that's what I wanted to talk about. Demons, physical preparation, leave on foot, backpacks, some of the dreams that I've received that I haven't spoken about on YouTube. I've posted in the link below. And uh, the mark of the beast. So, knowing that if you're in, a, in, a, in the suburbs or in the city, and when these things happen, um, they're going to go around and round you up, as I've received so many dreams of being rounded up, uh, troops rounding people up in buses. Uh, watch my video on uh, Be Ready to Flee. Uh, martial law troop roundup dreams in the description below. Um, that's an important one. It goes together with my leave on foot backpack, if if you can, and the seven dreams I had of World War Three. I'm getting all these dreams from the Lord about coming calamity and the need to flee and follow the guidance of the Lord. If necessary, flee into the wilderness. And I'm saying to you that we know. The Mark of the Beast is coming. We can see it in the world. It's already being popularized. It's on uh, Dr. Oz. It's on the news. They're all promoting it. Oh, you don't have to have your credit cards. Look how easy it is. We know that it's going to be used as a precondition to receive aid or assistance or food or whatever they're going to do. They're going to implement it. It might be voluntary at first and then it won't be. I've received dreams of people getting rounded up by troops with mil with assault rifles in from buses and you had to flee avoid the buses because they were going to take you and imprison you and if you do not accept the mark you were going to be killed so that's what awaits um that that is really what awaits that's what the word tells us everyone will receive the mark um child old free poor slave rich anyone the mark is going to be implemented. The mark of the beast. Without it, you cannot buy and sell. So that's why I believe it's an RFID electronic microchip. And because of everything they've talked about. And because I believe it has advanced technology in it. Which can alter your DNA. Or change you in some manner. Where you are irredeemable. And you cannot be saved after that. And I believe that's coming. So if that's coming, that means if you get captured by them that's you're going to it's going to come down to the choice real quick real fast you have to refuse it and die for Jesus and refuse to deny Jesus name um and otherwise you may be able to flee in those situations or you may there may be time the way things unfold for you to move yourself into a better position i do encourage you to pray to the lord and seek him and say lord am i in the place that you want me to be? Am I doing what you want me to, Lord? Am I ready, Lord? What do I need to do to be ready for what's coming? And ask ask the Lord, are these times upon us? Are, are we nearing these times, O oh Lord? Tell me if these things are upon us. We need to ask the Lord and ask Him more questions because He is our teacher. We're told that we have no need for a teacher and that the Holy Spirit can teach us all things. So know that I believe very soon we won't have internet, we won't have laptops, we won't have all these things, these methods of communication. I'm speaking to you now, which is something that is only due to this technology that we have. And soon I believe we won't have these things. We'll be on our own and we'll be with the Lord though. The Lord will be with us always because the Father and the Son make their home in those who follow His commandments and abide in Him, and the Holy Spirit is within us. So we have the full nature of God within us, and we need to abide in the Lord and seek Him. And this is so going to be so true with what's coming. We need to follow His every guidance, every guide, and seek Him on everything. Ask Him. Seek Him. Pray to Him, because we're going to need it. We are going to need it. We will, yeah, we will perish so badly if we do not seek the Lord in what's coming. I'm telling you that our enemy is very well prepared, they're uh, very well equipped, 
and they have some malevolent, serious evil that is uh, guiding them and directing them. And that's all right, because we have the Lord Jesus, and he's already overcome the world. And he is going to return to reign as king. He's going to judge this whole earth. So there is no power that comes close to our almighty God. He is the eternal God. Everything else is a creation. So know this. And I just wanted to uh, tell you these things, but also to encourage you that Jesus is the way. He has already overcome the world. And through him, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So just wanted to convey some of the seriousness of what the word, uh, the word warns is coming and what I believe is coming soon. I don't know when, I don't know timings, but I do believe that the judgments of the Lord will start increasing and they have been increasing and I believe that the spiritual attacks of the enemy are, will be increasing because I believe spiritual wickedness has been given more power to prevail in the earth because the Lord has allowed this to happen as part of his judgment and you will see a growing and increasing polarity between the light and the darkness and people are going to start being super evil I've seen it in my dreams um, just just when when the uh, shallow facade of what's holding together the society falls apart when you can no longer buy and buy food and groceries at the shop when the power goes out you see how quickly things will change and you need to seek the Lord and seek each other and, pre and prepare for the times ahead. I just wanted to convey that. I love you, my brothers and sisters. I love you so much and I hope for you and your families. I hope they come to Christ and I hope you may do the Lord's will and I hope that you may hold fast until the end, no matter what, and refuse the mark of the beast if it comes to that because I believe we should all prepare for that and to do the Lord's will and await his return, our beloved bridegroom. So I thank you, my brothers and sisters, and may God bless you and your families. Your brother, Christopher.